Good day, ladies and gentlemen. You want to play Elden Ring? Don't use magic, but still want to go for the range road? Well, you have something left, and that would be using a bow. Which can be fun. I mean, just spending because you have, like, a cool bow that you can just spam away like this. Obviously, if you're shooting someone with a shield, uh, they're already beginning pains begin. But playing a bow in Elden Ring is quite fun. It has a lot of downsides because they kind of put bows in as a main weapon, but technically it's really only meant to pull. That being said, I refuse to accept that and I wanted to test how magnificent can bow be and how well can you fight? And the answer is it does work, but bow has quite some prerequisites to get it running. For example, if your target can't bleed, you're already screwed to a certain degree so you do need to use bleed arrows and obviously have something that can bleed every target that can't bleed you will have to use fire arrows to do significant damage but you're obviously missing out on this big bleed stack so it will take a little bit longer so these gigantic gargoyles golems whatsoever that actually all can't take bleeding damage well, good luck. That's going to be a little bit painful. But for example, General Radan, who is considered a fairly annoying gentleman with the arrows, I found him almost easier as magic. One thing is, if you're using the bow I'm using, which is perfect for bleeding damage, that would be the barrage ability. Barrage ability doesn't really work when you're on your horse. So if you're on your horse, you can only do shots normal. But if you're off your horse, you can actually use a barrage to then pump out your arrows. Problem with that is your character needs to be attacking, hitting, and actually standing, as you can see here, right in front of you, that you're then actually able to get your arrows in. Because if your character is moving sideways, your enemy you're shooting at, you're not really going to be landing an arrow. And also, you're essentially shooting your runes at your opponent. Because you're not getting your arrows back. Which means if you're shooting at Radon and you're not first trying him, then every single arrow you have been using is lost, which can be quite annoying. What we're gonna do in this guide, I'm gonna tell you where the bow is, how to get the bleed arrows, where to farm them the best, and then have a great, fantastic time against Radon on your journey. Also, how do you get the fire arrows? That should also be a thing. And then kill those opponents. I've been so far playing up to Radon and past there, killing Big Dragon, uh, killing the Queen and other shenanigans. As you can see, I have the Hellbard on my back. That would be the Tree Sentinel Hellbard. And I'll be also explaining why we have that. So first and foremost, it's going to be getting the Barrage Bow. Then why do we use that weapon? Because obviously, one thing about a bow build is you're going to be using bow against bosses. You're not, you're not going to use bow against normal mobs. So, so if you play a bow build and your intention is to use bow throughout the whole game, like to kill every single normal mob, it's not going to be fun in my eyes because like bow wants to be used for yet yeah, very hard normal mobs that are in your way. Uh, but essentially considering that you have to farm your arrows especially your bleed arrows you can't really buy them i think there's one vendor somewhere that i haven't found yet for bleed arrows but yeah you have to farm them you don't want to really waste because technically you would have to farm like 30 minutes to an hour before actually starting to play the game so you kind of have enough arrows to survive everything and can do x tries because right now what I have had is when I do a try on a boss and I don't first try the boss, then I'm stuck farming. But here you can see gigantic bleed proc just getting Radon down. So it does work. I mean, magic is obviously stronger. That's not the point. But Bo does have a place in the game. I would probably not recommend it for first playthrough. So if you're planning to do a second playthrough and you ever wanted to try out Bo, do it. That's a thing you can definitely look at. Now, first stop, we're going to go for the Barrage Bow. We have the Misbegotten Short Bow here. You could go for the standard Short Bow that the Bandit starts with, but that's terrible. The Barrage Bow, as you can see, has a better scaling with D in strength as supposed E for the Short Bow. And Barrage, as you can see, like you hold your button, your R2, 
and you can just go and really shoot arrows away like there's no tomorrow. Uh, as you have mana and stamina, obviously. The best point to farm the misbegotten shortbow, and this is also why you don't start with a bandit, because a bandit has shitty stats. What you want to have is, you actually want to have a character that has good strength in the beginning, because you'll be pumping strength to wear the golden hellbard, and you'll be pumping strength to wear the misbegotten shortbow, when you have the radagon source seal, obviously, to help you there. But that being said, I would probably start with a vagabond. Then you're going to go all the way south to the Weeping Peninsula, Bridge of Sacrifice, right up to the next one, Castle Morn Rampart. And then you're going to go around from Castle Morn Rampart to land up here in the Ailing Village outskirts. The Ailing Village outskirts has first and foremost a church where you can actually get an upgrade for your tier flask. So that is up here. And then there is these gentlemen, the Morn weird beastman archer dudes and these are the guys that have the bow for you so here you're gonna go kill these that you can do relatively early already too so you start with the vagabond you have like a decent weapon and then you just hurt these guys teleport back to the point rinse and repeat do it again until you have the misbegotten short bow the problem is with the misbegotten short bow it is a upgraded weapon with normal smithing stones so as soon as you have that your journey begins with upgrading the weapon you have smithing stones number one here in that one that's the algo lake or down here you have the morn tunnel for smithing stones one two then if you're looking for smithing stones plus two you can actually find three roughly here and three roughly here. So you can look that up in the Fixture Life uh, interactive map. That's where you get twos. Then you would have threes up here in the Raya Lucaria tunnel. Fours you can find up here later in the Rune Strewn Precipi. Fives and fours both also in the Gale tunnel and the Celia tunnel. And that would already be giving you a good upgrade to your bow. Because you obviously do want to constantly upgrade your bow that you're able to dominate. But in order to not have to use your bow then on normal opponents, as soon as you get the misbegotten short bow, and maybe upgraded it with plus one or plus two on things already, going to Fort Hein. This is Fort Hein. And I highly recommend you not doing the Kenneth Height quest, because in Fort Hein is not only the bleed arrow recipe. In Fort Hyde, you can also farm one of the materials that is needed for the bleed arrow. And as soon as you clear the castle one single time, it stays empty. Unless you do the Kenneth Hyde quest and then some beastmen enter it. And that could be like getting quite annoying because there's always gonna be some beastmen, some beastmen, some beastmen in there. What you need here is, man, we're like, you know, we can just murder these gentlemen quickly. You need these Blood Rosies. This is what you want to have. Blood Rose is here on X spots. You can get like six, plus, six Blood Rose. That would be 60 Bleed Arrows because you do need Blood Rose for the Bleed Arrow. And then as you enter from there, you walk all the way up to this. And in this room on the right side should be the Nomadic Warrior Cookbook. One of them that allows you then to craft these beautiful arrows. That would be the blood bone arrow followed up by the blood bone arrow fledged. You do need thin beast bones, blood rose, and flight pinions for that. Now, where would you farm that stuff? So this is where you get the blood rosies. And where I do farm my thin beast bones is the Church of Dragon Communion. The Church of Dragon Communion can, reach, can be reached through the coastal cave caverns on the other side here. Coastal cave. Can go through that and on this island as you can see there's a bunch of uh sheep and with the weapon art you can just get your weapon hold it to the side of the horse you can really easily get these down so that would be already potentially six seven thin beast bones and then on top of that as you get the thin beast bones you have here more you can kill teleport back rinse and repeat and on the little cliff sides here you also have the penguins or the dogs or whatever. You murder them and you get your flight pinions. So 
that's where I usually farm my beast bones and everything. And I teleport a couple of times to get the blood roses. As you can see, this is kind of like a reoccurring theme when you're playing this. Funny story, also down here is the Nomadic Merchant. So if you jump down from the first step to the Nomadic Merchant, he does sell you the recipe also for Firebone Arrows. So always pick up the smoldering butterflies when you see them. I don't actually know a spot to farm the smoldering butterflies, but there is. You should probably just look that up on the Fixture Life interactive map as well. But these are being used for everything that's stone enemies, everything enemy that can't bleed. If you have an opponent that can't bleed, that is what you want to do. Smoldering butterfly for you. Now, as you then have the bleed arrows and the bow, next step would be getting Knight Lutho because Knight Lutho is a very, very amazing summon that in my eyes is just perfectly made for this class. This is also why I'm putting a lot of points of mind in the beginning. So I had enough points to essentially get the bow 16 in strength. I, put, I had 11 points in strength so that with a plus five from the source that I would get in. And then I kept put pumping points in mind. As you can see, I have 21 mind already. You need 20, 21 to actually summon this. So as soon as I had enough points in strength to get the misbegotten bow, I started pumping vigor, some endurance, and mostly mind that I get just enough to get Luthor out. Because Luthor is an extremely aggressive summon. He goes straight in, he throws the spear, he can guard counter attacks, he can teleport to block attacks, and yes, he can teleport in general to just get close to the opponent and go super aggressive. Luthor is hyper, hyper good, and he has like his enchanted blade there going crazy. Where you get Lutho in the beginning is down here at the Tomb Sword Catacombs. There, when you start up here from the Church of Pilgrimage, and then they're below the Earth Tree. So you do not have to write up to the Earth Tree. They would be below the Earth Tree. And Lutho is really been very good for me because you obviously don't want to play with yourself again. Why don't you want to play with yourself? Well, yourself is kind of shit. You know, you're, you're, you're a bow user. So you don't want to have yourself using bows too. You want to use someone like Lutho, who essentially keeps the opponent in place, who blocks things, who guards things, that you can then shoot from the side and do your damage whilst being tanked. And as you go here, you see this hidden little doorway, and that is the catacombs you'd be looking for. Now, obviously, the source seal is self-speaking. You get that in Fort Ferris. We have a video on that. You just teleport to Fort Ferris and Khaled, uh, Celia Tunnels, standard shortcut, and get that. Shouldn't be a problem for you. If you want to know more instructions for that, just check the respective video for that on the channel. And with this, you have the beginner sent after now just having to kill the tree sentinel in the beginning. And that tree sentinel is relatively easy to kill with a bow. You summon Lutho, you spam him with arrows, you get it destroyed. And the thing again being, why do you want the weapon from him? So the weapon from him has an ability, it's called Golden Vow. Golden Vow actually hires your damage by 15% and of Lutho also by 15% and reduces damage taken by five. So that's 15% more damage and 5% less damage for 45 seconds. So you can whoop out that weapon, quickly use the weapon art and then instantly do more damage. But the most important thing is it also upgrades with somber smithing stones. So we're using normal smithing stones to upgrade our bow, which is very expensive. And then we use somber smithing stones to essentially upgrade our next weapon. And as you can see here, we're like, I don't know, we're, we're not super high level. We're just rolling away from him. We have Luthal do the damage. And then we just spam him really with the arrows. Obviously on horse can be like quite annoying. I do have normal arrows i think here i d actually did use normal arrows i didn't even use bleed arrows but with bleed arrows he should be significantly easier even so i just used the normal arrows as soon as i get the misbegotten bow because you could just spam him down and you, you just get your freaking golden hellbart and from that point on you get 15 percent damage easily the weapon has good swings i mean like very very easy and good swings has a good charge you can run up to someone you know do that run up to someone this you have a jump attack that's actually not bad it just claps down and then again your weapon art boom buffs yourself then you swap over to your bow and instantly get more damage and then you can just barrage again everyone down easy peasy lemon squeezy bow can work quite fantastic in order to not have to use faith though because you need 13 faith to do this and most characters have like eight or nine faith you need 12 to actually wield the golden hellbard you just take the two finger heirloom. 
the two fingers heirloom raises faith by five. You could do it later, but why not do it right there? The two finger heirloom can be found in the purified rune in the Lernia of the Lake Shore. By the way, Margaret the Fell, Godfrey the Grafted, with the help of Lutho, like I essentially did everything I just told you before I essentially went to Margaret and Godfrey. Because the Grafted goes down and also freaking Godfrey goes down extremely easy, especially when you have Lutho just stand in front of you. Now, you walk up here to the Purified Ruins, straight up from the teleport point. Again, this is the Purified Ruins we're going for. And the Purified Ruins, as you might have seen in the other video, has a hidden basement. So you could just murder everyone here if you want to now. Or you just go in right down here. Hidden basement. Boom chakalaka. That's where you would now find... <laughs> the two finger heirloom that I've been using. In total, bow is super fun. The pain of having to craft and farm arrows is there. It's just part of your journey, essentially. It does not feel like a main weapon because it doesn't have any good scaling. You see the scaling on the golden hellbard, right? Strength, C, Dex, E, Faith, D. By the way, heads up, if you're wondering, why do I only have 27 strength and not 30? Well, strength is 1.5 times when you're two-wheeling a weapon, so you need 20 strength minimum to have the golden hell bar. So not that much. But yeah, uh, bows actually don't get better scaling. So D and E is kind of like the max. You don't get a bow that has an S dexterity scaling, so you can't actually spam bow away. They definitely have to work on the bow scaling because right now it's just pain that you're not doing the bonus damage. The bonus damage comes with your arrows, essentially, but it's not like using a strength weapon with later an S scaling and you get like 500 freaking plus damage because you just pump strength. And that's also why it's very funny. In a bow build, I'm actually putting some points in strength, but most of my points land currently 35 in vigor, mind, and endurance. So I'm currently pu pushing vigor and endurance. I have some in dexterity, but again, why, why put more in dexterity if the bow doesn't scale with it and you don't do more damage? So dexterity on 18 or 20 is enough, and then the rest goes strength, vigor, mind, endurance. I mean, mind, I only pushed up to 106. So I can always summon Lutho. Uh, I think that stays on 21. And then now Endurance Strength Vigor is what I'm going to push up because that's essentially what you need. The most, the more Endurance you have, the more arrows you can shoot in a row, like bup, 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 with ever moving. And then the more strength you have, the more damage you do with the bow and the more damage you also do with your Hellbard if you then need it or normal mobs. Have some fun. Play some arrows. Enjoy yourself. I mean, it is definitely brilliant. I can beat the game with this 100%. Uh, it's quite intriguing, but obviously opponents that don't bleed will always be pain. I tried the double gargoyle at the waterfall, and I have to say that that's just no fun. Like, it's just simple. It's just no fun. I definitely can't do it underleveled. I have to do it overleveled. So some bosses, especially the ones that don't bleed, you essentially have to do overleveled. But let's say, for example, the earth tree spirits. Every single earth tree spirit that is around a tree, you just equip fire arrows and you just murder them. I mean, there's one up here that gives you ATK runes. And that one is so easy to kill. Summon Luthal, have Luthal do the tanking, and then just hammer fire arrows into that thing. And you'll never have killed one of these things easier. So damn simple. Well, enjoy the bow build. Have a great, fantastic, good time. Hope this helped you. Check out the other guides on the channel. That would be very appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to find your way back for more. And see you hopefully in the next video.